This is Twit. This is from The Atlantic. Your AirPods will die soon. Actually, this is last year, but I just wanted to reiterate this as we get a new series of AirPods, AirPods Pro. This is so depressing because they don't have any way to make these last. So if you bought AirPods about two years ago, they've been out since when, 2016? Yeah, end of 2016, December 2016. If you bought them a couple of years ago, they're going to die. What do you do, Christina? You just buy another pair and throw them in the trash? Yeah. Uh, well, I okay. So I didn't throw them in the trash. I was going to say, how many pairs have... do you already own? I have four. Oh, I'll, this I'll... is fair. Yeah, I was going to say. Let's say e-waste. Have... E-waste. Well, e don't throw them in the trash. Pairs. I gave my OG pair to my husband, and I don't know how good the battery is, but your OG husband. No, I gave I gave my OG pair of AirPods, oh, okay. the ones that I got in December of 2016. Your, your husband is not original gangsta. He is not, unfortunately, <laughs> for him. Um, so I gave him um, my original pair, and I bought the AirPods to the ones that had the wireless charger. Um, those were then immediately upgraded, or I guess. I got the AirPods Pro as soon as those went up for release. So I only had that second pair for a few months. Um, so they're my backups. And then I use the AirPods Pros. The original pair, the battery life is probably not great, but I mean, Grant didn't pay for them, so he can't complain. So whenever they, you know, right. So, so whenever they, uh, they cease working, I guess that's when, you know, e-recycle or whatever. They're so small that I guess, I mean, couldn't they make it that you could... Maybe not yourself. You bring it to the Apple store. They pry it open with little tweezers and put in a new battery. Couldn't they do that? I don't know. I mean, my thought would be that they could do a thing where, you know, they send them off to wherever they send things off and they could do a repair that way, similar to, I guess, what they used to do with, with you know, iPods. So you could bring them in, pay a fee, exchange for a new pair that has like... And then Liam back. could take them apart and recycle them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. They're a robot. Or you could make them out of cornstarch. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> the reason, uh -huh, the reason you know, I bring it's such this, a shame though that they do uh, that they can't do that with them. You know, so they do it with hearing aids, they do it with other devices. But it's just you know a shame in our man modern manufacturing process. It's just cheaper to not do that. I mean, let's let's be honest. I mean, yes, That's it looks it good. You're the right. aesthetics is good. They have you know sealed devices have a higher IP rating, so they have less chance of getting dust, water, all kinds of gunk in them, things like that. But it's just cheaper. And when you're manufacturing millions of these small devices, if you can save a cent, two cents, half a cent, you know, you, you're going to do that. Um, so now. I, I would love to see us be able to replace uh, the batteries in them and use them longer, uh, or at the very least, like you said, Leo, at least ship them back and have someone else give them a second life. Well, the reason I bring this up, uh, Tech Radar got a leaked EU document. Remember, the EU just passed uh, uh, regulation suggesting that all chargers should be uniform to eliminate waste. Apparently, an, a leaked EU doc suggests legislation that would fo force all new phones to have removable batteries. Yeah, good luck with that. I'm behind it. That's uh, I mean, a I'm great a, thing. I'm not opposed. I just, I just say good luck with that. Uh, you know, I mean, because it's well, they can, can, can't they say you can't sell the. They could say you can't sell the phone in the EU if you don't have a replaceable battery. Right. So then every single phone that is made today, literally every single phone, is not oh. able to be sold. Like <laughs> they might, their, their constituents might get upset. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that the lobbying groups and the, and the other things, yeah. and the trade people might are, are – I'm saying this isn't going to happen, Leo. <laughs> I'm saying that I can't think of one phone that's made today by a major manufacturer that has a replaceable battery. But don't you think consumers would like this? And don't you think it's no. better for the environment? This should be the law. No? Why not? I, I'm not, I don't think consumers care. No, I think consumers want, would rather have a bigger battery that lasts longer than one that they have to you know, pull out and replace themselves. I used to, when I'd buy the old days of the Samsung Galaxies, I, you'd buy the phone and two batteries, and then if the if I was traveling or whatever, I didn't have to have a Mophie case or a charger. I just take a, a have, swap out the battery. I think that's a great feature. I think consumers would like that. And by the way, those phones weren't noticeably thicker or heavier. It wasn't. No, but a did, weren't they? They weren't waterproof, or they weren't dust. Weren't they no, more? They, that's true. They, but yeah, which is more yeah. likely? You're going to drop your phone in the toilet, or you're going to run out of juice? Well, I, mean, I, think this well, I, I like I, having. <laughs> uh, but also, I mean, it's the fair. way that they've changed batteries 
is is part of the reason that, that they're sealed is that you can put them in you know funky shapes and you can get more battery life. I think that if the alternative is okay, I have this battery that's replaceable, granted, but it's not going to last as long. Yeah, it's not I just have, funky shapes. You don't have to package them. If you're going to package them so that somebody can hold it, that's different right. than if you're just going to build it into a glue it into a phone. Right. Well, they, they I think make it easy on what? to change your batteries too. You know, I I've since started going to Apple about every year, a year and a half, to get my iPhone battery replaced because it does prolong the life of my phone, and typically I don't need a new one. Um, but it costs like I don't know, 120 bucks, I think, and so. I and just feel like that it. process should be cheaper. That's worth it. I think they've actually dropped it. I think it's under 100 bucks now, depending on the iPhone. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. But you it's know, like getting the, a refreshed the, phone, a new phone. I think that's great. I think that's the other problem is that we in the we in the tech reportage business, we're getting new phones every six months, every two months, every... So we don't ever experience this. But normal people don't want to buy a new phone every couple of years. They want to keep it longer. Well, and I think I we saw they Apple should, address some of this, right? I mean, with That's, their trade-in mm -hmm. programs. And right. I think, like, you you were talking about, Leo, with consumers. I don't, I'm not sure that my daughter and her age core, ho, core cohort, you know, what they're going to want when they start buying their own phones. Thank oh, goodness. When dad's uh, not buying it. By the way, I stop buying can I just phones. say something, Bill, to warn you? My daughter's 28. My son's 26. I still buy their phones. In <laughs> oh, fact, oh. I still pay for their cell service. Oh, oh, that's okay. I mean, I was on my father's plan until last year, so I, I couldn't say anything. Grow up! Uh, I'm, I'm on a family wow. plan. Yeah, I, I know. The gray in the beard, and I'm still on my dad's plan. That's nice. But that's it's good. depressing. I'm, oh, my God. I'm going to be paying seriously, for Forever. You you wonder what consumers are really going to want. So are they going to want a phone that maybe has a lower ecological imprint? You know that is more eco friendly, has some of these features like a replaceable battery that they a battery that they see is more eco friendly. I just don't know. I mean, right now for the people that are buying phones, they like the shapes, they like the sizes. They you know if they can take it into Apple and get a refreshed battery for fifty bucks every couple of years, that's great. So I don't know. I, I but I am with you, Leo. I, I miss the days when you could pop out a battery and I put in a so. new battery. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've way, been taking, uh, you know, on Tech Republic, I've been taking these things apart for a long time. You know, we do a series on Tech Republic and our sibling site, uh, CNET, cracking open. And, you know, it's, from my perspective, I also, you know, in a previous life was an engineer. So, um, you know, it is possible to create thin devices. Are they going to be as thin? No. Are they going to be maybe as sleek looking? No. But it is possible to do it. It's just not as um, cost effective. I did not know about cracking open. I am going to become a regular visitor. TechRepublic.com <laughs> slash cracking open. This is great. You cracked open a Roomba and you do this. You yeah, a Nintendo yeah, NES, for a, long time. a Polaroid Snap. <laughs> yeah, we took apart some old tech, some vintage tech, some new tech. Um, and we usually, so I can usually get things back together. So oh, that's one of the things the that hard we part. try to do is to tear down where we put it back together, right? Um, I'm not one of those ones that just puts it in a blender and shreds it or takes right. it apart and wants to see if it's I have broken a few things, but, you know, I'm all with you. I mean, I wish devices had replaceable batteries, especially the um, AirPods. You know, I love my AirPods. Uh, my daughter loves her AirPods. But I hate the idea that you paid a couple hundred bucks. I know. And then in two years, they're just going to go into a landfill. That's I what I hate. And I don't want to be e-wasted or something, but still. Every plastic toothbrush you and everybody else has ever bought lives in a landfill now completely intact Archaeologists in a thousand years will dig them oh, up and say, what were they doing with these? Why are there so many of them? <laughs> Wasn't uh, that the old George Carlin joke? Maybe that the only reason humans are around is so that the earth can have plastic? <laughs> maybe that's what it wanted all along, was just us as the plastic producers? Oh, that's interesting. There's a thought. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I wonder if somebody is going to come along, nobody's tried this yet, and make an eco-friendly smartphone. There's also issues with the, the metals in the phone, the battery... Uh, uh, and so forth. It'd be nice to get, you know, instead of a blood phone, to get a, 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 a nice phone. I wonder if somebody would do that. You think they'd make money? Or, Christina, you're, you're a, you don't believe in people, do you? I believe in people. Well, I don't believe in people. <laughs> I don't believe in people. <laughs> I don't believe in people. You would think people would just be like, I don't care. I want the thinnest phone. I don't care. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, that that absolutely. No, I mean, I think that, okay, the amount of money that it would cost to like have like a, a, a sustainable type of device, uh, there would be some people who would do it, sure. And uh, it could maybe become a status symbol of, of sorts. But the average person, no, come on. A green phone, man, come on. I mean, it's nice in theory, I guess. And, and it's not that improbable. You know, I know that the, in the fashion world right now, one of the big trends is uh, is like, Eco consciousness and climate change, you know, like wearing climate change, and uh, sure, and so fashion magazines have embraced that. A lot of fashion brands have embraced that. Nike, I believe, just released their um, Olympic. Um, yeah, so you know, they, the, they the have, US they have Olympic their recyclable sho- shoes. Here, here's yeah. where that falls apart. If you're asked, if you're if you're told, okay, um, this is now going to cost twice as much and be less powerful, and uh, you're going <laughs> yeah. to still have to get a new one every couple of years, maybe even more frequently because it is less powerful. I think yeah. that the number of people who would actively spend more on less just because of the echo argument. Yeah, I, Leo is right. I don't have faith in people there. I, I don't. I think that you could maybe <laughs> yes. have a small niche for the fashion thing, but Leo is absolutely probably, correct. No, I don't. I don't well, right. It depends. I don't it has to be a statement. You know, it has to turn into to a statement piece because I think like people people are easily persuadable too, and so if you have the right people holding this this you know this hypothetical yeah, device, I guess. See, but see, then here's it, the, you know, here's the thing: those right in. people. They'll do it for the ad, right? But then you're just going to see them with their iPhone 11 Pro Max or iPhone, you know, 15 or whatever, yeah. <laughs> like on Instagram, like the next day. Like, okay, they'll right. they'll do the runway show, is but you know what I mean? They're not going to, yeah, actually it's, it's use not a laugh. hand crank phone or whatever. Yeah, okay. um, no, I, I mean I hear you, and and the truth is, you know, it's it's improbable that this will happen because the device relies on so many rare metals, and so you know, it just. By virtue of existing, cell phones are kind of, uh, you know, they just have a negative impact on the environment. I don't know how you solve that. They're plastic and metal and 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 uh, rare metals I wonder, and battery. Though, I mean, it'd be great sci-fi uh, point to have people who scavenge the landfill looking for these now long lost materials to recover them so we can make more phones. Right? <laughs> At some point, we're going to need to do that. Yeah. It's like it sounds like Wally or something. Yeah, I, <laughs> it I, is I Wally. I already wrote it. <laughs> well, and or you have some other Wally. kind of you, you have some other kind of global event. Not to go back to what we were talking about earlier, that <laughs> starts to put a cramp on global trade, yeah. right? I mean, mm-hmm. these you know, not all of these minerals exist in areas where these phones are manufactured. You know, you you mentioned it with blood phones, Leo. You know, yep. these minerals have to come from places that are susceptible to disruptions, whether they're pandemic or, you know, political or, you know, just other events that are unforeseen. So, you, you know, there's a lot that, um, you know, goes into making these kind of phones that are, you know, most people don't kind of see, right, and can be disruptive. So, you know, maybe, maybe like you said, Leo, maybe it's the science fiction story where you'll eventually have to mine the, uh, you know, mine the garbage dumps to yeah. recycle these phones. And hopefully that's why I say e-waste the devices, right? E-waste your, you know, your AirPods and hopefully... Every bit of gold, every bit of uh, neodymium, every bit of the precious metals, heavy metals that are in these things, you know, it's stuff that doesn't have to be dug back up out of the ground. That's actually, uh, maybe future generations will thank us for so thoughtfully taking all our phones and putting them in a landfill. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Wow, they were really thinking ahead. They knew we'd want a single place to go to find all that bauxite. That's nice. Thank you. Here's Wally. Recycling. Aww. 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 